What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out this video. Today we're going to look at a new bike from Hey Bike. This one's called the Hero and it's a complete carbon fiber frame. So does that mean that it's a lightweight fat tire bike? Well, I'd say it's lighter than the competition, but let me tell you everything about this bike. Okay, folks, we're taking a look at the newest from Hey Bike. This one is called the Hero, a complete carbon fiber frame on the Hero bike. And this is a prototype bike that they sent to me for testing. Currently, it's in a crowdfunding campaign, and I'll put a link to that campaign below so you can see the current pricing. I believe the production models are estimated to ship in June of 2024, and right now it's priced at $23.99. And there's a couple different available options for the Hero Bike. This is the step through frame and it comes in this orange and gray color. They also have another frame they call a trapeze frame and that comes in a lime green. So you can choose your frame design and you can also select which type of motor you want. This prototype came with a thousand watt rear hub motor, but they're also gonna make it in a 750 watt mid drive motor. Now that you know some of the available options on the Hero Bike, let me start walking us through all the components. And there's a couple things on this prototype bike that are gonna be different than what you receive on the production model. And we'll cover those as we come to them. All right, now let's start up here at the front. This is a 26 by four fat tire bike. You've got Chow Yang or Cho Young tires. I'm not sure how you say it. It is a through axle, not a quick release, and you've got big brakes on it. They're 180 millimeter disc, they're branded RSX, and they were awesome. These were really great brakes, great stopping power. So really great job with the brakes, like those a lot. You do have a front suspension fork on the Hero, and this is one area I thought this prototype was a little bit lacking, and they told me that the production model is gonna have a different fork on it. It's gonna have a lot more adjustment here on the top. This one's just either free to spring or it's locked out. So there should be a better fork on the production models. Here's your headlight. I can pop that on for you if you want to see what that looks like. There you go. Nice bright headlight. But on this prototype model, there is no brake light or tail light. Now they tell me on production models, there's going to be a tail light here underneath the seat, but it won't be wired into the bike at all. It's just going to have its own separate battery, but perhaps they'll upgrade that in the future. It's always nice having a wired in brake light and tail light. Now the battery pack is very nicely integrated into the frame. It's right here. It's a 48 volt, 18 amp hour battery pack. You put the key in on the other side, turn this little lever here and the battery will drop out the front. You've also got the charging port right here. We can charge it on the bike and they do provide you with a four amp charger. So this thing will charge up pretty quick. So not a small battery pack, but not a huge battery pack either. It's kind of in the middle, I'd say it's adequate for the bike, just to give you an idea of range. I rode this thing like an absolute maniac. Pedal Assist 5, heavy use of the throttle, just running full blast, 30 plus miles an hour, and I got 27 miles out of this thing before it was pretty much dead. So I thought that was a pretty respectable range given how I was running this bike. Now I can't go too long before I talk about this frame. Really cool looking frame design. I've never seen anything like this. I've never had a carbon fiber frame on a bike before. It's got a great paint job on it. The orange really pops. It looks very unique. I don't know that you could make this style of frame using aluminum, but certainly an eye-catching bike and it is carbon fiber all the way from up here down. This is all carbon fiber right here. Even the rear like swing arm, these pieces are all carbon fiber as well. The only thing that is not is the forks but pretty much everything else, well, I guess your seat too would be aluminum and your handlebars as well. But for the most part, this is, yeah, all carbon fiber. And the million dollar question is, is the bike lightweight? Well, when I put it on my scale, it weighed 77 pounds ready to ride. So if you're comparing that to other full suspension, four inch wide fat tire bikes, it is lighter. Those bikes typically are in the high 80s, low 90s on the weight. This is 77, so you're you know, 10 to 15 pounds lighter than an equivalent full suspension bike that's on an aluminum frame. They do make that other frame style they call the trapeze frame. I would assume that that's probably gonna be about the same weight as this, and they each have a carrying capacity of 400 pounds. So I wouldn't say this is a lightweight bike, but it is lighter weight. I mean, when you're talking about putting on a big thousand watt motor and big, huge four inch wide fat tires, and you're also doing full suspension, I mean, it's tough to keep the bike weight down. But the carbon fiber did help it shed a few pounds. And I opened up, took the battery pack out and looked inside on the inside of the frame. You can actually see the carbon fiber weave, which was pretty cool. It might've been neat if they kept that design on the outside as well. And you would really know at that point it's carbon fiber. Just kind of put like a gloss over top of it or something. But while we're down here, we can take a look at the gearing. I'll put the free wheel and the chainring sizes on the screen for you. But this is a nine speed bike. Never ever ran out of pedal. Even pedaling at like 40 miles an hour, 
I still had feeling in the pedals. It's a Shimano Altus shifter. So it was a great setup for high speed riding, which I tended to do a lot of on this bike because it's so fast, but it had way more gears than I even used. I tried to use maybe six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, actually not even, probably more like five, six, seven, eight were the gears that I used the most. The rest of them I never even went into. The step through frame is really easy to mount, of course. And just to give you some dimensions to this bottom part right here is about 19 and a half inches, but where you're gonna put your foot through is probably about 21 inches to get your foot through there. The minimum seat height is 34 inches. So I've got some clips of me getting on at the seat height where I was riding it. Also me getting on where the seat is at the minimum height and they list the recommended rider heights from five foot three up to six foot six. I'm six foot tall. I had no issue riding this bike in a comfortable position. These fat tire bikes always fit me pretty perfectly. I'm able to pedal them really easy, get off and on really easy. They tend to be a comfortable ride at my height, but my wife who's five foot four, they always feel pretty big for her. I've got some footage of her mounting the bike. Again, five foot four inch rider. She was you know, barely able to get her toes on the ground. 34 inch seat height's a little tall for her. I think she normally rides at maybe 32. And she was able to get on, take this hero bike for a ride. However, she did mention she felt a little bit stretched out due to the piece on the handlebars that kind of sticks out. It makes her reach for the handlebars a little bit. And then also, smaller person, smaller hands. So she actually commented that she had a hard time reaching the brake levers with her shorter fingers. That's something that she's told me on a couple other bikes where the brake levers kind of stick out a little bit further than normal. So she had quite a reach to grab them. So just a couple little things we noticed, things you don't really get to know about a bike unless you actually go out and ride it and try it. So hopefully you're finding these little notes helpful. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is this rear suspension. And the rear suspension shock is hiding right there. I think this is called a horse link suspension. And I found it to be pretty soft. I mean, it soaked up a lot of the bumps. It had a lot of movement in it. I actually tried to put some more air in it to make it a little bit stiffer, but I had a hard time getting on the air valve, which is right here. And it's so close to the frame that you can't really get any kind of air hose attachment onto it. I have about four different air hose attachments and I couldn't get anything on there. And I did give that note to Haybike as well. Hopefully they can adjust the angle of that air nozzle for the production models but the suspension did have a good amount of travel and it made for a pretty plush ride. So let's get repositioned. I'll show you the handlebar controls. For the controls, you've got a right hand twist throttle. Yes, perfect. And then you also have rapid fire trigger shifters. Again, this is a nine speed bike. Over here's your button cluster that controls the display. This red button is your horn. And this is another area where this prototype bike differs from the production bike. So you won't be getting this display, they tell me, which is actually a pretty nice display. So I'm not gonna go through any of the programming, but the display you'll get is gonna be integrated into the handlebars. I'll throw up a picture of what it looks like on the crowdfunding page. It's pretty cool looking. So I don't know exactly how that display is gonna function, what the buttons are gonna be like, but the production models are gonna have that display integrated right into the handlebars. Now I see that as both good and bad because it looks pretty cool but I don't know how difficult it's gonna make it to you know, make any changes to your handlebar or handlebar stem. But I think that's the last of the differences between this prototype and production. The display is different, the forks are different, and it's gonna have a taillight on it. And the last couple items to cover, the pedal assist system. It is a torque sensor where it keeps track of the pressure on the pedal, and you'll see more about that in the ride footage. And then last but not least, the rear hub motor, a thousand watt, 48 volt, thousand watt rear hub motor. They say 100 Newton meters of torque. And I'll show you in the ride footage what that can do with both hill climb power and speed. And now I think it's time we show you what it's like actually out riding the hero bike. Okay, everyone, ride experience on the Hay Bike Hero. So much to talk about. I've got a lot of notes on this bike. This bike's claim to fame is that it's a full carbon fiber frame and it's lightweight, right? So is this bike actually lightweight? I can tell you riding it, it feels light. I mean, it doesn't ride heavy. It weighed on my scale 77.5 pounds. So in terms of 26 by four fat tire bikes, I'd say that's about average. But I think a better way to look at it is to compare apples to apples. You need to compare this bike to other full suspension bikes. And once you add all those rear suspension components, things get heavy pretty quick. So if you compare this to other dual suspension bikes, it's lighter weight. 77 pounds, I mean, most of those bikes weigh 85 plus up into the 90 pounds. So it's a full 10, maybe even 15 pounds lighter than some of the other competitor full suspension bike. But the carbon fiber frame is cool. It is a really cool looking frame. Digging the orange and it's a beautiful paint job on this thing too. 
but we're gonna cross these couple little bridges right here and then we will be at the base of our hill climb and I'll answer the next question you might have and that is how powerful is this thousand watt motor all right so here is our hill climb test we test all the bikes right here on this hill and we time them going up so a standard like 750 watt e-bike climbs this hill 22 seconds the fast ones slow ones more like 25 26 so this one with a thousand watt motor I mean I think it's gonna be toward that faster mark let's give it a go ready let's put in pedal assist five let me make, make sure we get all power twist the throttle three two one go off and running wasn't a crazy pop off the line but solid up to 12 miles an hour 13 steep part and then we cut the time right here time I'm gonna guess that's toward the lower end probably the 23 second mark ish that would be my guess just based off a of feel I don't know but I mean decent hold me up that hill no struggle no problem at all no pedaling from me all right so we got some decent power out of this thousand watt rear hub motor and truthfully it feels more powerful in terms of speed than it does on the hill climb because I mean you can really wind this thing out it is really fast I'm going to show you here in a second we're going to go find a straight stretch where we can really open it up and you'll see what I'm talking about but it just feels stronger with speed than it does hill climb but in terms of let's talk about ride position um, I'm a little bit stretched out you got this piece right here on the handlebar that kind of juts out forward it stretches you out a little bit it's not really uncomfortable I'm not dying to change it like I am on a lot of other bikes but I mean you could shorten that up if you want to sit a little bit more upright the seat it's not flat but it is kind of soft and I'm not I guess hating it because you've got the really really plush rear suspension that just soaks up every bump so you don't even notice that the seat isn't perfectly flat and wide the rear suspension just takes care of all of that strain <laughs> so that it rides really nice in terms of suspension uh, let's uh, it, with the exception of the front forks so I did say you know it'd be better if the forks were a little bit higher end and they said well those aren't the forks that'll be on production bikes they're gonna be a better fork that's more you know adjustable you can adjust that compression I was like, okay good it makes me feel better I asked about the display screen because on the Indiegogo page the display was actually built into the handlebar like stem and headset and they said that that was the one you're gonna get not this one so I didn't, you know, didn't get a chance to test the new one, obviously. I, I like this one. I, I like this display. I wouldn't be upset if I got this one. They did say that a rear rack would be available at the time of order. I didn't get a rear rack with this one, so that's good. I always like having that rear rack option. Although I did ask about fenders as well, because this one has no fenders, and they said no. They don't have fenders for it yet, and I don't know if they're working on that or not. So you might not be able to get a set of custom fenders for it. You'll just have to buy you know, an aftermarket set and get them attached yourself. Now this prototype delivers some pretty crazy power. I mean, I'm in pedal assist one right now. You can hear the motor assisting me and it just kind of like never cuts out. It just keeps going and going and going. I mean, I'm at 18, 19, 20. It's still going, 21, two, three. I mean, I did bring that up with them and they said, no, 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 we've, we've changed the software for production models. And that'll be you know decreased down because i can't ride the prototype at low speed it just won't allow it it just wants to go 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 now for the pedal assist system it's a torque sensor but my experience with this has been that it recognizes the initial pressure if i start pedaling kicks in pretty quick right there i'll stop pedaling start i mean it's almost instantaneous that it kicks in but it doesn't seem to deliver any more power the harder you push, which is typically how I ex expect the torque sensor to work. When I start pushing harder, you know, give me more power, but it seems to deliver just kind of a constant amount. So that's been my experience there with the torque sensor. It just kind of, it recognizes immediately and then just delivers a constant amount of power. All right, we got some room to run. Let's get up to speed here. We got lots of gears to pick from. I'm in eighth gear now, tons of pedal feeling. We're up over 30 now. 35. 36. 37 on the bike, 35 on the GPS. There's 36. Wow. 
Good speed. 36 on the GPS. Very nice. Really some great speed out of this thing. 36 miles an hour. I think the display on the bike was like 37. But going along with that, the brakes are also really good. We got RSX branded brakes. I believe they're like a four piston caliper. They got a lot of bite to them. I'm gonna pull them hard right here. I mean, oh, they're sticky. Wow, a lot of stopping power on this thing. I mean, that brought me to a stop in a hurry. I felt the front end dive down. Dang, those brakes are really good. Those are some of the best brakes I think I've had actually. They're not really loud. They really bite down hard. This hero bike, man, it cruises right up to that 30 mile an hour mark pretty easily. Effortless pedaling in eighth gear. We're at 30 miles an hour. I mean, just amazing. 31, 30. I mean, I'm putting no effort in this at all. This is just trucking right along. If you're looking for more of like a high speed commuter where you have to go 30 plus, this might be a good bike for that. It's just roaring through this neighborhood though. That motor, that motor is really kind of loud. Just shut the pass. All right, here we go. Now we can go. Well, we're going a little bit uphill right now. No trouble keeping, you know, 29, 30 mile an hour. This thing just wants to go. I feel like it's got more of this in it. It's got more of this like power high end and then it does like down low grunt. Look at that thing going 33. And a stop sign. Wow, those brakes are great. Very fun bike, very fun. I love that speed, it's addicting. Now they're gonna sell it in, I think two different versions. So you got this orange one that's a step through frame. And then there's another one they call a trapeze frame, which I think is like a lime green. So, it, but that one was still pretty low. You could still step through that one almost. I think I might go that route. Cause this one does have the, uh, like the step through wiggle. If you shake the handlebars really hard like this, you just feel the frame kind of like wiggle. And that's, that's just every step, through, every step through I've ever been on does that. So if you're a really heavy rider, you know, you're the 300 plus pound, you may go with the trapeze frame just so it's a little bit more rigid. Now pedaling in pedal assist five seems to really open this up, but I'll do just a throttle only run here real quick so you can see what that looks like. The 30. 31, 32, 33. I mean, throttle only 33. Yeah, that's pretty good, man. Start pedaling a little bit. 34, 35, 37 on the bike, 35 on the display. Yeah, so I mean, really great speed. <laughs> if speed's your thing, man, you're gonna like this bike. All right, let's do a little bit of uh, suspension testing here. Hit this uh, ditch. And blaze through this field a little bit. This isn't too bad. I mean, it soaks up all these bumps because they're just little bumps. I don't really have a whole lot of off-road testing areas where I live. It's very bouncy. Suspension is very soft. The front forks are real soft. The rear suspension is pretty soft too. I did have some trouble getting air into it. That air valve is really hard to get on. But doing this, this is a smooth ride. This is probably about the limit, I would say, of the suspension. I'm not off the seat. I'm sitting on the seat. It's pretty comfy. It's just eating up all these bumps. That's no problem. You get into some bumpier stuff though, I think you're gonna find the limitation of the suspension pretty quick. Let's go over. There's a, another field over here that's a little bit worse shape. 
Let's go check that one out. All right, here we go. Let's try this field. This is cornfield or something. Oh, this is real rough. You can hear everything clanking around. Really kind of clanking. Yeah. This is uh, not as comfy. You can hear the forks kind of rebounding up and hitting as well. Why are we riding on all the bumpiness? We could be out here on this road. We got the speed for it. Crank it up. There. Ah. Oh. So much nicer. There. Yeah. That's where this bike is happy. And last but not least, just to give you an idea of the range on this Hay Bike Hero. I rode this thing today until it is pretty much dead. I mean, we're down to one bar on the screen. It was flashing at me earlier. And uh, we started the day with a full charge, of course. It's got this little thing on here. Let's switch over to voltage. We're at 40.8 volts. So that battery's pretty much done at this point. You know, it's it doesn't have much power left in it at all. I'm going to call it there. It's out of usable power. And I rode, I rode this thing hard today. I don't think I could ride this thing any harder at all. I went 27 miles, pretty much flat out, all out. So I highly doubt that's how you're gonna ride it. So you're gonna easily get probably 30 plus miles, maybe even closer to 40 if you're pedaling a lot and taking it easy on the throttle. There you go, just one piece of data. Of course, that's gonna depend on your terrain and your weight and all that stuff, but people always ask about range. So there you go. I got 27 miles just killing this thing as fast as I could. All right, well, hopefully that ride footage gave you a better feel for what it's like to experience this hay bike hero. Now I'm gonna to try to summarize things for you a little bit, talk about the positives and negatives as I see them. So positives for me on this bike were frame. The, I mean, the frame design is just cool looking. It's a cool looking frame. It seems to be constructed really well. It's painted very nicely. It's very accessible with the step through. I like the frame. The carbon fiber does help. It is lighter weight than competition. If you look at other 26 by four full suspension fat tire bikes, this one's a good 10 to 15 pounds lighter. So the carbon fiber does help. The brakes were excellent. I really like the brakes. The gearing was great. Never run out of pedal on this thing. Even at, you know, 35 plus miles an hour, you still got feeling in the pedals. It has solid hill climb power, it's tremendous speed, very fast. I mean, a 48 volt thousand watt motor, and this thing was going 35, 36 miles an hour pretty easily. That's, that's some fantastic speed. That actually really surprised me about this bike. And the suspension was nice and soft, so it made for a pretty plush ride. Now, for the negatives on the bike, there's a couple things I'll point out. Number one is no fenders. They don't sell fenders for it. I don't know if they're going to. So, can't get fenders. You can get a rear rack. They're gonna have that available if you, when you purchase, but no fenders. There's no tail light or brake light wired in on the bike. This prototype has nothing. The production models are gonna have like its own standalone battery operated tail light under the seat, but for an electric bike, I feel like they should just have a tail light and a brake light wired in. I don't care if it's a $600 e-bike or a $2,400 e-bike. I feel like you need to have brake lights and tail lights wired into the bike. Now for the rear suspension, although it was nice and soft and plush, if you were a heavy rider, you wanted to adjust that shock, make it a little stiffer, that air valve is really difficult to get onto. I'm hoping that in the future they can change the angle of that so you can more easily adjust the rear shock. Now another issue that I encountered that was specific to this prototype was the pedal assist system being set really high. This bike, I could not ride it slow. The pedal assist one took me to like 25 miles an hour. So just, there was just no slow speed riding on this. I mentioned this to Hay Bike. They told me they've already changed the software in the production bikes. So you'll be able to ride them at a low speed. Pelasys 1, I think it's gonna take you to about 12 miles an hour. So that issue should be fixed. Um, I, I'm not sure if that software update also affects the torque sensor. I mentioned in the ride footage that it engages really quickly, but it doesn't seem to vary its power output with my varying pedal pressure. So honestly, I don't feel like I can give a fair 
evaluation on the pedal assist and torque sensor system being that this prototype bike is different. Now there's one other thing that came up while I was riding and that is that there's this resonance or this frequency where if you're going exactly six miles an hour and you crank on the throttle super hard, when the back wheel engages, it creates this kind of bounce in the rear end. And I, it's kind of like when you're going down the highway in your car and you hit you know, exactly 73 miles an hour and you feel your steering wheel kind of shimmy a little bit. It was kind of like that. You had to be going at a very specific speed and engage the throttle in a very specific way and you could get the rear end to kind of bounce. And then if you just release the throttle and hit it again, it's fine. So I don't know, that was my assessment on it. It's just kind of this weird frequency that you could randomly hit and it would start to bounce a little bit put a bunch of miles on this bike and had no other issues. But I feel like I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't at least tell you everything I encountered while riding the bike. But overall, nice bike. I mean, I like the frame design. It looks cool. It's easy to get off and on. It is lighter weight than the competition. It's got great brakes. It's super fast. So if that sounds like stuff you're interested in as well, again, I'll put the link to the uh, campaign below so you can check out all the details on this hero. And hopefully you found this video helpful, informative. If you did, consider hitting subscribe and uh, consider coming back for more. Thanks.